one of the riches of the depth of this scripture from the book of Isaiah. This is the second of Isaiah's servant songs, is that it's not clear who the servant is. It seems very deliberately uh, ambiguous or anonymous, the servant. Even from this second servant song, we have an individual that seems to be spoken to. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He named my name. And yet, in another place, it says, you are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. The nation of Israel, as an example. And then again, we have this idea of this agent, this servant who brings Jacob back, gathers Israel back to the Lord. But why? Why, again, to not simply to restore Jacob and Israel, but to be a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Now, we might be looking from our perspective of the great revelation that is Christ to understand the witness to Christ that the scripture is. But I think we shouldn't rush in to losing this great range of reference. Certainly in our liturgy today, this is given to us and it's almost we're implied that we're to understand this servant not to be Jesus, not to be the Messiah, but to be John the Baptist. And so, and yet it also, this, this language, the light to the nation recalls Jesus' sermon on the mount when he calls for all of his disciples to be lights to the nations. And this also made me think of something that Jesus says later about how the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that leavens. And so the effect that a little of us in the world can have on the nations, the salvation reaching to the end of the earth. Turn then to the Gospels and thinking about how they speak about the story of salvation, this salvation that reaches to the end of the earth. Mark leaps straight in with the story of Jesus, as so does Matthew in different ways. But it is Luke's Gospel from among the synoptics that has a big, long introduction, that has the story that is the origin of our solemnity today, the story we heard a bit of read in the Gospel, that is of the birth, not just of Jesus, but of his precursor, of his herald, the story of the miraculous and sign-filled birth of John the Baptist. But that begs the question, it seems to me, is why? Why is John chosen as a herald, or perhaps more deeply, considering this anonymity, this ambiguity, this great range of meaning that the servant songs can have, that the prophecy of the Old Testament can have? Why not just is John chosen as herald, but why does Jesus need a herald? Certainly the language we have all had through the, um, the liturgy is about going ahead of the Lord to prepare his ways before him. And Mark certainly and, and the other gospels give that uh, passage from Isaiah to, they apply it to John. Why does Jesus need a herald? Why does the Lord need his way prepared for him? I think one way of thinking about it is to recall in Jesus' own ministry his varying levels, his mixed success in bringing his message of the coming of the kingdom to people, particularly the place he is from, particularly the place he grew up. He says prophets, and that's relevant, prophets being from Isaiah, we have this um, reflection, this, this light shone upon John the herald as a prophet. Prophets are not without honor except in their own house. 
And we can put it another way about why does Jesus perhaps, why does the Lord need his way preparing for him? Why does Jesus need a herald? The rabbi who must praise himself has a congregation of one. Human beings need an endorsement. We need a reason to follow. We need someone else that we trust to say, this person you don't know that's come into us with all these wonders and signs, yeah, follow him. I did, and this is the result. We need somebody to point and say, look, there's the Lamb of God. This is one way of understanding why the way of the Lord needs preparing. John is said to close the prophetic role. There aren't any more prophets after him. And yet it seems to me that today and throughout the history after the great revelation and the salvation brought to the ends of the earth by Christ, that Jesus still asks for heralds. He still asks for prophets. He asks people to say, this is what believing in Jesus does for you. This was the gospel's role we have at the end of the gospel of John. This is why he wrote it, so you may believe. It's the church's role to be the leaven in the world, the light to the nations, the servant of the servant songs. It is our role to be Christ's heralds.